Jim, uh, thanks for uh, sparing us a little bit of time here on Troops Player. We've uh, a, a bit of a, a mixed August, two losses, two wins and a draw, uh, followed by three wins in September. And we're actually five matches unbeaten now. It's a nice little uh, roll we're on now. Fifth in the league. Are you happy? More than happy, yeah. Um, you know, after the Hartlepool game, losing that game and going into Sheffield United and losing that game, you know, you're, you're getting a little bit where's the goals coming from, let's get that first win, let's get up and running, but um, you know, we've always had confidence in our own ability, we knew that we could create chances and score goals and that's been proven, so overall I think um, if you would have said we were coming to, to mid-September and we were fifth in the league and three points off the top of the table and in good form, I would have snapped your hand off. Yeah, absolutely, and, and the goals haven't really been an issue, have they? They haven't, no, you know, I can understand uh, someone pulled me actually on the way out from I think it was the Wickham game, one of the fans mentioned about, you know, why don't we go and play 4-4-2 as if it's going to solve everything, but, you know, we've played in the formation um, for the majority of the time, you know, it works well for us, we've got good personnel that fits into that, into that shape, um, you know, we've got good options within the shape, it's adaptable, which was proven on Saturday against Newport, where we slipped into a 3-4-1-2, 3-5-2. Um, and as I say, we always had a confident, confidence in our ability that we could uh, we could score goals. We struggled, I think it was one goal from the first four games. And then since then, we've uh, got goals aplenty from all different angles as well. So, long may continue. Uh, the new lads have settled in well. We seem to be playing more flowing football. We look like a team that's, that's confident in each other. They look really confident with each other. Is that a difference this season, do you think? Definitely, yeah. I think um, mm. plays with the ball. I think Fleming's come on again. But... You know, there's been a lot of uh, pressure on Fleming over the last season or two with regards to being our main player here um, and you know, getting goals from the middle of the park as well. Um, I think now Wildig coming in has sort of kicked him on a level. I think Fleming's good for Wildig, you know, uh, two good footballers. Yeah. Jamie Devitt's doing well. I think he's got about seven or eight assists already, which is outstanding. Yeah. Uh, I think he got eight in the whole of last season and three goals and he's on there. Uh, seven or eight assists already um, and one league goal, one cup goal so he's doing well you know um, you bring in the likes of Molyneux and people like that they're good footballers and then as I say we've got a nice blend you know we've got power and uh, pace with the likes of Tom Barhues and Kevin Ellison Mullen you know big Jack Ryan's come in Sean Miller's come in and done well I think going forward we've shown some real good stuff um, you know wasn't as good on Saturday at Newport, but uh, it was a totally, totally different uh, game to what we've been used to. You know, different formation. We had to dig in away from home. Things were stacked against us. Late change leading up to the game. Um, so yeah, we grinded out. Probably didn't deserve to win the game, but we we'll take it. Uh, in well, that's the game we'd have possibly lost last season, the season before, though, maybe. I don't know. I think uh, people saw about last season and the season before. I think. This stage last season, I just got managers a month, hadn't I? You know, we were scoring loads of goals, playing 4 2 3 1 as well. Um, we were second in the league this time last year, Jim. So I'm slipping. I'm slipping a bit, yeah, that's <laughs> right. But um, I know I think, um, you know, over the last couple of years, we've done loads of times when we come from a goal down. We've done it once coming from three goals down to win four threes, you know. So we know we've got that never say die attitude, which you need. You know, I've played against teams, uh, managed against teams where if you get the first goal, you know, it looks like you're going to win the game, but now, you know, look at us against Newport. Yeah. Newport pegged us back Saturday, but over the last couple of years, we were 2 0 down here, 1 3 2. Um, you know, and we've come from behind in the past against them. We've done it many a time over the last couple of seasons, so I wouldn't say it'd be a game that we probably would have lost. I think um, they were better than us in the first half. You know, deserve to be leading, but for one reason or another, we found ourselves leading. Um, at half time, second half I thought it, it fizzled out a little bit I don't think um, either team got on top of each other um, we had a great chance to wrap it up at 2-0 didn't do it with Big Kev but thankfully he won us the penalty with some uh, great, intelligent, experienced play that got us the penalty and Mullen held his nerve so I think uh, over the last couple of seasons we have proven that we can come from a come from behind in, in games um, and that's great, that's about spirit, that's about uh, work ethic, desire, togetherness um, and all those things that you need to pull yourself back on level terms or even go on and win the game. I think uh, 
one you, you talked a minute ago about you know one reason or another. What, yeah, I think that one reason, you know, let's let's call him Barry Roach. He had a, a cracking game, and he seems to have come back from his injury uh, with a real new sense of purpose. He looks. He looks leaner, fitter, sharper than ever before. Yeah, he's, he's a he's a key player, isn't he, for us? Yeah. Well, we've we've always said, you know, when you're injured, you've got to use it to your your benefit. You've got to pull a positive out of it somewhere. And the best example I could use was Jack Redshaw when he did his hip, and how he, you know, really worked hard on his physique and his fitness and his strength, and really got himself in tip-top condition. Barry Roach has done exactly the same. Yeah. Um, yeah, 32, 33, whatever he is, but it doesn't matter, you know, if you're willing to work hard and he took it on board last season with regards to his injury, you know, got himself in real, real good condition uh, and now it's paying dividends because he's playing extremely well, there's no doubt in the bar, he's one of the top keepers in the division, I've always said that, always enjoyed playing in front of him, know what I'm getting, uh, exactly the same, now managing him, you know, he's, uh, he's consistent. Every keeper makes the odd little mistake here and there. That's that's just general. Every, even the top ones in the world. Um, but the way he's gone about his business since he's come back in pre-season, uh, leading up to pre-season, coming in throughout the summer and working hard with Chris Goodall and Sam and Farmworth and Lee Jones as well. Lee Jones has been coming up and putting through his paces. So he hit the ground running in pre-season, and uh, you know doesn't surprise me that he turns in a performance like that at Newport last week uh, on Saturday because last season. I think it's similar similar time Cambridge away. He probably single handedly won us that game as well, which we won two one on a day when Mullen got two, but if it weren't for him we probably would have lost the game. So there is gonna be got games where strikers grab all the headlines and you know, whoever gets mad at the match, but uh, every now and then your keepers need to pop up and to win your points and that's certainly what he did at the weekend. Yeah, certainly my man of the match last yeah, he's day. Yeah, everyone's man of the match, I think he was the players' man of the match. Um, you know, if you're looking at it, you, you want your big players to step up. I don't think anyone really played badly at the weekend. I don't think anyone played as good as they could. You know, we're probably in the middle somewhere uh, with regard to the outfield players. But certainly in Barry Roach, he had an outstanding game and uh, kept us in it. But it hasn't been all playing sailing, has it? With uh, selection-wise, you have you had some selection headaches, especially uh, especially at the back uh, this season, haven't you? Again, once at the uh, the defensive record to be a little bit better going forward, they're doing great second leading goal scores in the league. Goals coming from all over the park. But if you look at what we've had, obviously Baz has been out and come back in and pre season it was a little bit, is he gonna be is is he gonna be okay, is he not? This this, that and the other. Um you know, we've had Wilson with a calf and had a problem at the weekend, we've had Doug there with an ankle, Paris with a back, Edwards with a suspension, Beale with a hamstring. You know, the best teams who do well have, have got that settled. Uh, defensive line. Um, How far is Peter Murphy off coming back? Um, well, again, he's not in the back line, but he's a big player for us in that regard, and he's our captain. And he's a he's a leader. And he's a talker on the pitch yeah. and all that. We'll have to wait and see. Um, you know what happens with Peter? He's uh, he's working hard, um, and we'll see what happens. But um, you know he's not in our plans at the for the medium term. So we've got to run about him. But certainly in the back line, we've got good options. Of you know if we play three centre halves. Goodall's proven that he can step yeah. into that back line. Yeah. You know, I think Alex Kenyon can do it left sided as well, uh, no problem. I think in Paris, uh, Doug Dale and Edwards have got three very good um, centre halves, and you know it's a big um, big job for me keeping all three of them happy. But uh, you know if we're going to play a, a four, one of them will unfortunately miss out, but uh, they're all doing well. So I think um, when they're all up and running and everyone's at the top of the game, I think. Uh, We'll give ourselves even better chances of winning games. Certainly, if we can keep doing what we're doing going forward, which hopefully we will do. We've got some tough games coming up. Uh, we've got Northampton on Saturday, followed by Oxford and Luton. Uh, if we come out of that still in fifth place, you'd be would you be happy still, yeah? Yeah, I'd be happy, but I'd be more happy with the top of the league. Yeah, you know, it's uh, you go into every game, and pay the team that you're playing the respect that they deserve. There's no easy games in the division. You know, I think everyone expected us to go to Newport on Saturday and steamrolling because they had one point but I think anyone who went there and watched the game would see that Newport are a good side, yeah. good football side, a good good um, a good staff who coached them well, yeah. uh, plenty of youthful enthusiasm, key players, uh, and they're a threat and it wouldn't surprise me they start winning more, you know, winning games and getting themselves off the bottom of the table because there's a decent outfit with decent options, certainly when they get all the players back fit and well. 
So uh, if they're bottom of the table and you're just about struggling to beat them, you know, anything can happen against anyone. We've proven that he would have expected us to go to Portsmouth with the injury and suspension problems that we had. And we could have easily been four or five in the upper half time. It's the way it is. We take every game as it comes. Northampton's a, a big club at the level. Uh, got a manager who knows, an assistant manager who knows the level inside out. Uh, we've got a lot of time for them and respect them both. Uh, and I know that it's going to be a tough game. They've just brought two good loanies in, uh, in Fairlong and Brisley. Um, probably one of the, arguably the best centre forward in the division in Richards. You know, be a very tough game for us, uh, as will Oxford, as will Luton. But we know what we're capable of beating anyone, so we're at home, we're in decent form, and we're going to try and win the game. And how important is uh, is it to you and, and the team for the uh, for the for the town to turn out and, and get behind them? It's massive. You know, we're fifth from top. We're scoring goals. Got some good, uh, exciting players. You know, three points off the top of the table. We just got to, you know, they've got to get behind us. There's no way so, but it's the biggest income. You know, bums on seats. You always say it'd be nice that the the community really get behind the, the, the local side and drive us forward. You know, we're doing. Doing well at the moment. Uh, there will be ups and downs throughout the season. We know that. That will be the same for every club. And it's then when you, everyone's got to stick together and enjoy the good times, which you are at the minute. And hopefully, you know, that will continue to go the way we're going. But it's it's massively important that the town gets right behind us and and gives us the support that we want and what we uh, what we need. I know the fans. A lot of the fans have got a uh, flag day planned. Uh, for, for Saturday, you know, it's going to be all flags and lots of noise and colour and, and that kind of thing. Does that does that have a positive effect on the players? Definitely, yeah. You know, the better the atmosphere, it's just a better match day experience. Um, played in games, you know. Always remember the York game and the cup uh, in the playoff. You know what an atmosphere that was. It was yeah. just makes the ears on your, your neck stand up. It's you want to you, you, when you're playing, you want to hear your name being sung. You want to hear your fans right behind you and. Drown out the opposition fans and things like that. And it, you know that's what it's all about. Football people enjoying the match day experience. And uh, as I say, I want this place, and I've always said it since I've been a player and as a manager. Um, it should be the focal point of the community. Yeah. There's an awful lot going on here. There's a lot of events, a lot of uh, christenings and weddings and things like that. Um, you know, it should be the what people look forward to on match day on a Saturday afternoon is coming down to the globe watching us. You know, hopefully we win the game, but win, lose or draw, have a good day, enjoy it, enjoy the social side of things, and um, you know, really get behind the community's football club because at the end of the day, I've said this in the past, I won't be here forever. You know, it's uh, all the players, the backroom staff won't be here forever. We will all move on in our careers, um, but the football club will always be here, and it's the town's football club, it's the people of Morecambe's football club. And without them getting behind us, you know, we find it more and more difficult to, to run a football club as we want to. So it's very important that the community get right behind us and the, the fans do all they can to make sure that this uh, the match they experience with regards to atmosphere and getting behind your local team is a good one. And hopefully that will uh, have a knock on effect within the community and more and more people will come in the future. Well, we've got the race night as well on uh, Saturday night after the match, after the Northampton match, and uh, I know you're looking forward to it as well. You said you're, you're coming down, and, and, and it is it's a chance for the fans to socialise as, as well as raise money for the uh, for the Pitch Perfect fund. How, how important do you think nights are like this, and how important is the Pitch Perfect uh, fund uh, to you this year for the training pitch? It's massive, yeah. You know, we're not blessed to have the facilities that a lot of clubs have, but. What we have done, we've identified an area, we've worked hard, we've worked in partnership with uh, Morgan High School and we've got it into a very good condition. Um, all started with the, the work that I've come done with regards to you know, the fence going up, that was massive. Um, it wasn't nice going down there and having to shovel up dog muck and move broken glass and things like that off the pitch before your play is going. Um, but that's definitely helped, and, it, and it's 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 massive for us. You know, we want to continue to improve. We want to improve on the pitch. We want our fan base to improve. We want to improve our youth development now, which is you know Stewie Drummond and the away nights department. We want to improve the uh, the training facility, the community side of things, the hospitality side of things. You know, not built in a day, but slowly but surely we've got it better and better as as the years have gone by. Um, and it's it's vital for us to continue to improve and, and progress in the future. Um, nights like Saturday night are great. Like I said, 
it's not what it is, you know, people go to football to enjoy the football and hopefully see your team winning, but there's a social side of things as well, people like meeting up on match day, people who work all week, you know, want to go f somewhere, spend time with friends, family, have a drink, have a laugh, um, and like, like, you know, Saturday night is going to be one of them, it's uh, it's important that the, the fans mingle and and have a good relationship amongst themselves and they do whatever they can to improve us, as I said, uh, in all departments of the football club. Good. Right, well, good luck on Saturday, Jim. Thanks for a bit of time uh, and we look forward to Saturday night and uh, hopefully uh, we'll raise uh, a bit of cash as well. Cheers, Mark. Cheers.